Shalom, shalom. All praises unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect, the 144,000 men that are toiling in this word in sincerity and truth, and the one third of the men, women, and children of the house of David, the Habayah Dawada, that are listening, learning, and helping in all sincerity and humility to you. I say shalom. Okay, um, so I have this lesson brewing. Um, you know, I have the picture of it, it just simply says Ahab. And uh, this is not in any relation to Ahab, um, one of the kings of Israel, uh, the husband, I believe, of uh, Jezebel. Um, you know, there's so many times that, you know, we we get caught up in. Uh, how should I put this? We get caught, you know, we get caught up in the world. We get caught up in the false love that uh, the world gives us. You know, hey, even Drake had a song called, you know, fake love, you know. But the thing is, these scriptures, they unveil something to us on a different plane, a different level of understanding what 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 love is. And, you know, uh, you know, I, or I, ultimately I can bring out the I'm going to bring out a few scriptures to help drill the home, the point home. But, you know, there's so many times where we get caught up and we. You know, when we see brothers and we greet brothers, you know, we, we can't act as if um, like men in the world, you know, you know, men in the world, we say, hey, man, what's up, man? What's going on? Yeah. How you doing? You know, all that kind of stuff. But when you when you greet a brother or when you say, you know, Shalom, you know, that has to be taken very seriously. You know, you, we can't just say Shalom. It's not like saying what's up. To somebody, you know, Shalawan means peace be unto you. You know, you're 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 literally putting a uh, vibration, an energy of uh, positivity and uh, you know, uh, enduring love onto that brother. You know, because when you hear uh, shal technically Shalom is peace, but when you have when you put a Y in there, it means enduring peace. You know that is continual. So Shalawan is continual peace unto you. You know. And, and so we, we, we have to remember these things uh, when we're faced with uh, Babylon, we're faced with the different things that we come into contact with every day. You know, all these things are, are really important. OK, so I have a few scriptures I want to bring out because we, we can't forget these things. Uh, this is First Peter 1 and 22. It says, seeing ye have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren seeing that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. All right. It says, see, we have purified our souls in obeying the truth, because when you obey the truth, of Yahweh, you purify your soul, you purify your mind, you get rid of all the filth in order to clean yourself and make yourself anew. OK, it says um, through the spirits. All right. That's that Rakakodash through the Holy Spirit unto unfeigned love, you know, and I'll never forget, uh, brother should come, you know, uh, was talking about uh, brother lawyer from Miami. And he said, man, you know, that brother is filled with un he has the gift of unfeigned love, man. You know, and, and for the, him to to make that statement about that brother, you know, and of course, lawyer would take that uh, humbly, but. That that's a beautiful thing to say about a brother. He's filled with unfeigned love, like where you have that. There's no uh, there's no pacifying his love, you know, that that true love to be able to to help, to be able to admonish, to be able to, you know, when you greet a brother, when you hug a brother, when you, you know, you embrace a brother, you know. And uh, Lord will, I can look up this other verse that I completely forgot about and it, it just hit me just now. You know, but Lord willing, I can get that. I might have to stop the music when I get that one. But let me keep reading. It says, seeing that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Matter of fact, let me read up unto unfeigned love of the brethren. All right. So that's what we're going to have that unfeigned love of the brethren. It says, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. All right. So fervently, man, hardly. 
uh, uh, continually fervent. And you know, the scriptures say be fervent in the spirit. So we got to be fervent in love one towards another. All right. We got to be, you know, uh, the way that and see, this is the thing. We as men of the Lord, we see love differently than men do in this society because they see men, they see love. If you say, I, uh, I love you to another man, you know, they look at you like you're homosexual, like you're a sodomite. But that's because of the ways of Esau has completely tainted uh, the idea of love. You know, there's this rock song. It's, and, I, you know, I be hearing like little rock songs when I be driving around. And they, he says, um, you give love a bad name. You know, he's talking about ultimately about a woman. And the wickedness that she's done and all of that kind of stuff. But what Esau has done, he's given love a bad name. Okay? With the uh, sodomy, with the homosexuality, with the pedophilia, with the uh, lesbianism, with the uh, bestiality. You know, they give love a bad name. And even the word love has been diminished. You know, because that word love just how it sounds it has it carries a a so to speak feminine vibration on it but you know we say a habata you know and uh well to say i love you is anya habata and you know even saying that to a brother it doesn't even you don't even feel you know when you say like i love you you know you kind of you know, you you know i'm speaking as a man like in the world you know and yeah i got friends in the world that homies that i'll say i love you too you know what i mean but uh, you know, it's it still can carry like a feminine vibration. But when you say a habata, you sound like a man. It sounds masculine, and that's why you know wisdom of Solomon, the prologue, it says, um, you know, uh, when the words are uttered in the Hebrew, they have more force in them. So you know, a man can say, "I love you," a habata, and it still sounds masculine. It sounds, uh, you know, strong, but it still shows a, a spirit of endearment. You know. But it says, uh, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of the most high Yahweh, which liveth and abideth forever. All right. And how are we, how are we born again, man? You know, people in the world like to say they're born again Christians, but we were born again through the word. Because when you read, uh, I believe John, the third chapter, when he was talking to Nicodemus, let me get that again. Let me get that really quickly. Actually, this is John three. And uh, and I started two. I just started one. It says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Yahweh by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from the most high. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except the most high be with him. It says Yahweh answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of the most high. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? All right. So Nicodemus was uh, he was stumped at this parable. OK, but you obviously we aren't going to go back in our mother's womb to be born again. In verse five, it says, Yahweh shall answer, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot answer the kingdom of the most high. All right. So, hey, amen. We, we were born again through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. His spirit gave us life. His spirit gave us truth. His spirit has given us understanding. And he's pouring out his spirit unto his elect this very day so that we can make it into the kingdom of heaven because Lord willing, we're those men. We're striving for the, the will of the Heavenly Father so that his words can come to pass. OK. Uh, it says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. OK, so hey, Lord willing, we are of the spirit, man, you know, and uh, just like the other nations are of the flesh and two thirds are of the flesh, you know, but the elect shall be of the spirit. OK, and that's why they can't get rid of their carnal ways. That's why their love for each other is um, is carnal. Their love will be based on, uh, you know, oh, I, my love will show you if I buy you this million dollar house. My love will be if I buy you these Jordans on so-called Christmas. My love for you will be, um, you know, uh, how much money you give me and telling me happy birthday. You know, those are all fleshly forms of loving and entering into the, the kingdom of wickedness. OK, but see, through the spirit, don't don't get me wrong. The word charity 
also is a synonymous with love. Okay, that word charity. So it says charity covereth a multitude of sins. Okay, so yeah, we we give to each other bountifully, Lord willing, if we're able to give it. You know, hey man, I I give the next brother next to me the shirt off my back. You know, that that and that that's why the Lord says, uh, pure with pure hearts, pure minds, man. Okay, through the Spirit, because we're able to help each other. Because the thing is, you have to always uh, see how was shy in a brother. You know, if that was the Lord, and the Lord said, "I'm cold," all right, and uh, hey, man, what you gonna do? You gonna take your jacket off and you gonna give it to the Lord, man? And that's how we got to treat our brothers. You know, we got to minister unto the brothers. Minister goes back to serve. We got to serve the brothers because we're servants of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And if we're servants of Yahweh Shai. He says uh, he will be friends if we do so whatever he has commanded. And a commandment, a part of it is love. All right. Um, so now let me give me uh, John 13. This is John 13 and 34. It says, a new commandment I give unto you that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. All right. So that's a commandment from the Lord to love one another as he has loved us because he gave his life for our sins, man. What what greater love is that, man? You know, people always, you know, in, in, the, in, the, in the world, they always try to say, you want to know the greatest love story ever told when Jesus Christ died on his on the, for the sins of the world. Hey, that is the greatest love story ever told. But it's when Yahweh died for the nation of Israel. That's the greatest love story ever told, man. The, the the pain and the affliction he went through, man. That's that's true. That's uh Ahaba Moth. All right, which is uh love true or true love. You know? And the Lord says if we if he that's a new commandment that we love one another. So it's not a it shouldn't be optional. It shouldn't be like, hey yo, you know, I ain't gonna love the brother because nah, man. You know, it says uh he that hateth his brother, there uh the most high is not in him. Then the truth is not in him. All right. So you got to love the brotherhoods, man. You got to love this thing is special, man. You know, to be able to be a part of this is special. And if we are of the elect, man, if we are those men, hypothetically speaking, we were together when the Lord created the elect. OK. And therefore, kindred spirits, you know, I always uh, talk to Shikam about that, you know, kindred spirits, you know, on the same wavelength, you know, and so the, this this a hop, this uh this uh brotherhood it can't be broken by carnality, it can't be broken by uh simple means, man. All right, because this is a, a brotherhood that that's ancient. This is a brotherhood that's been founded since the uh, beginning of the uh, foundation of the earth. Okay, uh, John thirteen and thirty five. This says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. All right. So that's how the Lord, that's how people will view us, man. That's how people will know that we are the Lord's disciples, the love that we have towards one another. You know, other people might see it as, oh, those guys are mean. Those guys are hateful. But when we show one another, when we see one another, man, we rejoice. We smile. We hug each other. You know, we salute each other. We give gifts to each other, you know, not to destroy each other's hearts, but out of charity, you know, and I tell the brothers all the time, man, I'm always trying to give something and not to be over righteous or to uh, destroy a brother's heart. But because, man, I know through the spirit, I have many, many uh, sins, man, I have many iniquities. All right. My iniquities are as the height of the heavens. So I'm always trying to give to a brother. I'm always trying to be as charitable as possible so that the Lord can uh, have mercy on me, you know. By this shall all men know, you know that you are my disciples, the love that you have towards one another. And this reminds me of uh, a moment when uh, we went to Valdosta, Georgia, and uh, it was uh, quite a few camps there. There was, of course, the Valdosta brothers. Um you know, uh, those brothers are up there, Ira, Yowanathan, uh, Batak, 
you know, his brothers was up, was up there. Um, because I'm speaking of a certain instance, we went we went and met at a mall, and uh, uh Bishop by Tazawam, some of the brothers from ATL, Abba, you know, um, uh, it was it was a few brothers up there. I'm not gonna name everybody, um, but uh, Shakam came from Detroit, and uh, you know, a uh, lawyer came up with us from Miami. You know, and it, so it, it was quite a few brothers there, man. And uh, it, it was beautiful through the spirit. But the, the point of the moral of the story is we all so a few of we were like, hey, man, we were going to meet, you know, some of those brothers were getting food and we were all kind of separate at the time. Um, and so they were like, all oh, let's meet at the mall. So at the but while we, we went to the mall, and we were waiting on the, uh, some of the other brothers to come and meet us. And so we're walking around, you know, bought a couple little things here and there. But then when they met us, it was like, hey, oh, yeah, we were walking in. We're over by the food court. We walk over to the food court. And man, like, you know, we have never a lot of us have never met each other before. You know, maybe we've talked, you know, on phones or uh, over YouTube, but we've never never met each other in person. Man, the, the food court just like lit up and everybody just like started looking at us. And we didn't even notice it until after. You know, but the way we embraced each other, the the love that we had, that we just showed one another, it was it was magnificent, man. You know, and I I didn't even, I you know, we were just we were just happy to see each other, man. And I didn't even notice it until afterwards. You know, uh, uh, Bishop Atazawam from ATL, he was just like, the Lord set that up for us to meet at that moment so that the people could see what real love looks like. And I'll never forget that, man, because he was right, because the people were like astonished, like in a weird way. You know, it's like we're, we're made a spectacle. So when people started like, what is going on? And then afterwards, we saluted each other. We talked for like literally like one, two minutes because we were about to go uh, go to camp. And then we all split up and, you know, we just left. And so all the people just looked like what what the hell just happened? <laughs> you know? But it was beautiful, man. It was beautiful because they never seen anything like that. You know, that that's what the Lord set up to show because these people don't don't know what love looks like. These people don't even know what love feels like, man. We've been so poisoned, polluted by what love is that and these mortal bodies can't even truly even possess what love is. But we try to the best of our ability to love you. How about Shem Shai? to love the brothers, to love our wives, you know, and our children, because the, the scriptures say a man shall love his wife more than his father and his mother, man. And we're, we're, yeah, we're Yahweh Hashem Yahweh's wife, the uh, Israelites, especially the elect. Okay. So that love that we have for another is how people will know that we're the Lord's disciples, man, you know. And Lord willing, we are those disciples, man. We continuously loving each other, man. And I'm not talking about, see, and this is the thing, man. I shouldn't even have to say this, but this is for those who have ears to hear, man. You know, but not no sodomite homosexual love because two men can truly love each other. And I'm going to get an example of it. Two men can truly love each other without it being any ill intent or illicit fornication and sexual actions or thoughts like that taking place. But in this world, they've shown you when two men love each other, it's got to be homosexual, you know, which is purely not true at all. OK, this is uh, John 15 and 12. It says, I want to start at 11. It says, these things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment that ye love one another. As I have loved you. All right. The Lord says, hey, that we that we love one another. He has loved us, man. All right. Because he, he loves us, man. He loves the elect. It says greater love that had greater love hath no man that it, that there is that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If you do whatsoever, I command you. OK. And, and so the Lord laid down his life for us, man. And it is, hey, it might come a time where a lot of us will have to lay down our lives for the brothers, man, and for the Lord. That's a great love, man. It says there is no greater love than that. Okay. And right now we're, we're laying, the Lord laid down his life for us. So we're laying down our, our lives for, for him. 
You know, it might come in, in full spin where we might actually have to do it. But Romans 12 chapter says we are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, man. So we're laying down our lives right now, man. We're hazarding our lives, you know, in order to to do the will of the heavenly father. But that's all a part of love, man. We showing our love, you know, honestly, because when it says faith without works is dead. All right. That 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 faith and that works ties into love, man. That works is, is about love, man. That's showing your love to Yahweh Bashem Yahshua. That's showing that you love him. That works isn't just like a, a, a say thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm saying and so I'm showing, you know, the scriptures say, be a doer of the word and I hear her only. James 1 and 22. You know? And, and so that that works is comes to love, man. All right? That's an action word. All right, that's showing that you love Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. All right, and the Lord said, "If you, this is the love that I have towards you, if you keep my commandments, and my commandments are not grievous." Okay, matter of fact, I'm going to jump up to John 15 and 20, 10. It says, uh, "If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept in my Father's commandments and abide in His love." All right, so Yahweh Shai abides in Yahweh's love, okay, because he kept his father's commandments. And so we're trying to abide in the love of Yahweh Shai. And through doing so, we abide in the love of Yahweh, man. It's all about order. It's all about order, man. Okay. Um, and I'm going to get Romans. Uh, oh. Romans, uh, what is it? 13. Romans 12, Romans 12. This is Romans 12 and 10. It says, uh, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor preferring one another. All right. So you got to be kindly affectioned uh, one to another. All right. Oh, when you're talking to brothers, you can't talk out of pocket. You can't say anything off the wall. You know, of course, we're comfortable with the brothers where we can laugh. You know, we can make jokes, things like that. But you you, you, you have to walk to not offend a brother, man. You have to be careful with the things that you say. You know, that's what I'm constantly saying. Hey, yo, Salak, your brothers for talking too much. Hey, Salak, your brothers, if I ever offended y'all, Babako Shah, forgive me. You know, that, that, that that's the spirit that you have to be in because you got to be kindly affection uh, towards the brother, man. You got to be careful with the things that you say. All right. You, this last thing you will want to, you should want to do is offend a brother because that's like offending Yahweh Shai. Okay. So you got to be kindly affection, man. Okay. It says in honor, preferring one another, man. All right. Hey, we, we prefer the brothers, man. At the end of the day, we prefer the love of the brotherhood versus anything else because the love of this world is, is wax cold. And there's nothing in this love but but death, the love that they speak, man. You know, we we love Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. We love the brotherhood, and of course we love our, our wives, we love our children, we love our families, man. But a lot of them have, might have to go because the, the the Lord said, "Hey, here's my brother, and here's my sister, and here's my mother, those that do the will of my father." Okay, so a lot of our families are going to have to go, but that don't mean we don't love them. But isn't it's not the same love that the elect has because the elect is the you know they like to say the uh, founding family or the founding hey the, the elect are the founding family uh, under the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai all right that that's that the uh, ancestral ancient love man okay let me get uh Galatians this is Galatians five and thirteen. It says, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for any occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. All right. So, hey, you know, we, we under grace and we got uh, we got the Lord's grace, but we don't use it to uh, go and serve our flesh. OK, we got to use it to, to serve you how about Shemiel Shai and show love one to another. It says for all the laws fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. And that neighbor is talking about uh, the, the uh, Israelites, man, and ultimately the elect of the nation of Israel. 
All right. And those who are in that right doctrine. OK, because, yeah, it's a lot of Israelites right now that know they Israelites, but they still acting like two thirds. They're still being wicked. They're still serving false gods. They're still not calling on the name of the Lord. They still not prophesying the word. They still not telling people that the mark of the beast is real. Uh, the mark of the beast is the RFID chip. You know, that's not love, man. That that's what they're doing is showing hate towards their people. We're showing love by telling you what the truth is and by correcting you. Okay? So we're we're loving our neighbor as ourselves, man. You know, hey, uh, you know, the brothers in my camp, man, I I, I love them uh, as uh as I love myself, you know. The brothers in, in all the different states, man, that I speak to on the phone, no matter what what part of the world they're in, man, you know. If they're doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah, man, I love those brothers as my own self. And that's the that's the beautiful thing. You know, there was this brother who said to me before, um, he said, It's nice to meet, it's nice to see you again. And it was my first time meeting him. And I thought that was an interesting statement. You know, it's because, you know, our spirits have met before. You know? And that's that's a, a heavy statement to make. Because we believe in reincarnation. We know that it's real. All right. But if they elect, were those uh, original, we're those original 144,000 we've met before. You know, and we're going to get that back. Lord willing, we're those men. We're going to get that back, man. And that, that's something that that's something beautiful to, to wait on too. to meet those that were created with you. OK. Uh, and I'm going to get. Um. I'm going to get this story real quick in 1 Samuel because for a couple of reasons. One, to give you an example of what true brotherhood and what true love look like. But also, uh, this is 2 Samuel. Also, because they, they pulled this out on, uh, what's that show? Uh, Dear, Dear White People. They didn't understand this verse. They tried to say this this verse on that video, on that uh, their series, and they and by a lesbian. She said that she was like, "I present you with a very vivid Second uh, Samuel first chapter, trying to make it about homosexuality, but she don't understand it, and they're trying to use that for wickedness." All right, this is uh when uh, Jonathan got killed. All right, this is Second Samuel one and twenty six. It says, "I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan." Very pleasant has thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Okay, so was he making a homosexual comment when he said that? Absolutely not. All right, he was he, him and John, him and Jonathan's relationship was like what like what they say joined at the hip. You know, they they would they loved each other, man. That was his boy. That was his homie. That was his ride or die, so to speak. You know. And, and I'm going to get first Samuel because I was going to save this verse for later, but it's important to get the backstory, um, just a couple verses on how they got to be that way. This is second. This is first Samuel 18 and one. It says, and it came to pass when he made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. You see that? So their souls were knit. You know, that was that was his that was his boy. That was his his his, uh, you know, his bondsman, his kinsman. You know, it's it's like, your, you know, when you got a uh, hey, brother, if I got it, you got it. If you going through something, I'm going through something with you, you know. And only only, you know, even in the world, you 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 had friends and boys like that, man. You know, so men understand this thing, you know, and they had a woman say that. But men understand this thing. You know, to be able to to love another man on the level way past the level woman. You know, you, you even had cats in the world be like, "Yeah, man, I would rather kick it with my boys than, you know, kick it with my lady." You know what I'm saying? And that's the thing. You know, when you with your when you with the brothers, you know, you don't feel no strife. You don't feel no pain. You know, you can let them know what's on your mind. You can talk about the scriptures. You know, all of that kind of stuff, man. This is this is true. A uh, a uh, uh, haba moth, man true love man passing the love of women it says um i saw first samuel 18 and 2 it says and saul took him that day and would let him go no more home to his father's house house then jonathan and david made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul 
All right, see that? They loved each other as their own soul, man. It says, love thy neighbor as thyself. They loved him as his own soul. So that's why uh, he said he's pa he pa the love for him passed the love of women. Because they 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 had they had this bond. They had an unbreakable bond, man. It would had nothing to do with homosexuality. King David loved women, man. He even he even got uh uh punished for uh being an adulterer. You know, taking another man's wife. He loved women. Are you kidding me, man? But they'll they'll try to flip that and, and say something wicked wicked about uh King David and, and Jonathan, man. That's why people don't understand the scriptures, and then people that are not don't have the love of Yahweh Shai, the spirit of prophecy, and understand who He is. You're not gonna you're not gonna get that. It's gonna go over your head every single time. You're gonna think, oh, that that's talking about homosexuality. So many things in here they misconstrue and try to say it's homosexuality, man. Where well, they don't understand the Bible and they don't understand love, so how could they get it? Okay. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 12. It says, And the Lord... I want to start at 11. Now the Most High Himself and our Father and our Lord, Yahweh and Mashiach, direct our way unto you, and the Lord make you to increase and bound in love one towards another and towards all men, even, even as we do towards you. All right? So those men are talking about the men. It says, uh, Acts, what's that? The second chapter? 2 and 21 it says hear ye uh, men of Israel hear these words you know the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another man it says to increase and abound in love man one towards another that means that love is supposed to get stronger and better you know the more we're the more we go to war together the more we learn together the more we pray the more we seek Yahweh by Hashem Yahushua, that love is increasing. That love is abounding. That love is 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 something on a on a different plane, man. Wait, wait until we get those new bodies, man. Wait until we're fashioned in a new form. You think the love that we have now is, uh, and we're doing it with with flesh? Wait until we get those extraterrestrial bodies, man. Unstoppable love, man. You know, and the thing is, unstoppable love in Esau's kingdom is full of wickedness and homosexuality and buck breaking, you know, and vile filth. But our un un unstoppable love is going to be something that can't even be uh, a thought of, man. Because we love the brothers as we, as we love Yahweh Shai. It says, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before the most high even our father at the coming of our lord yahweh shah mashiach with all his saints man all right so we got to love each other so to the end we may he may establish our hearts unblameable in holiness all right we're gonna he's gonna be unblameable he's gonna be like oh that man loved his brothers all right can't blame him for nothing this is uh first thessalonians 4 and 9 it says but as touching brotherly love Ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of the most high to love one another. All right. So we aren't taught by men about the ways of love. We're taught by we're taught by the most high because all scripture is given by inspiration of the most high. So we were retaught on how to love, man. You know, and that's what another thing those guys who just want to be solos, who just want to be by yourselves. You got to rid yourself of that spirit. All right. Because I get it. I've been there, man. I know the convenience of being by yourself. And, you know, but that's a when you by yourself and you're like, I can do it all by myself and I don't need nobody around me. That's a pride demon. And you got to get it off of you, man. You know, of course, right now they got the Lord got it shut down to where uh, there's no people who can come into Great Millstone. But nonetheless, all of those brothers who are on the other side, man, listening and tuning in, man. You know, hey, show that show them brothers that love, man. You know. And Lord willing, he he opened those floodgates again. I mean, in Salakia, he opened those gates uh, to repentance, so you know more men can come into the fold. But who knows? It's all up through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. Okay, he said, "I have no need that I write unto you, man." It says, "And indeed, ye do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia." But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, man. 
So, the, hey, the Lord wants us to increase more and more, man. Increase and abound in love, man. All right? This Ahab is, is serious, man. Okay? And we got we can't take it for granted. Because the people in the world that showed us love, they done stabbed us in the back and took all our money. They done did something dirty to us. Then messed around with your woman. And took something and never gave it back. You know? So we got to have it says he don't need to write us because we got the love of the most high, man. We got a whole different type of love now, man. It's first Peter three and eight. It says, uh, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. OK, so it says uh, if we're on, see, that's another thing. If we're on one mind. That's how you know you're going to have that endless love with another brother because we thinking the same thing. We thinking we have the love, we have the scriptures, we have the comforter, we have Yahweh Bashim Shai. So how could we not love each other, man? How could you hold yourself back from that love, man? Okay? It says be courteous. Being courteous to a brother, man. All right? Being polite, being gentle, kindly affection, man. Taking your time, man. You know? It says not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise blessing, knowing that you are there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. All right. So you inherit a blessing from not want to uh, just because a brother say something, you got to fight against it. You know, railing. That's what railing is arguing and fighting, man. You know, and to why do you how about Shemiel Shah? You know, I know some brothers in some camps might have those issues. And man, y'all got to rid yourselves of that, man. You got to get that spirit away from you, man. That's a demon. All right. But the why do you help by Shimei Asha for not, we, you know, not having any problems or contentions in our camp. And, you know, I always open the floor for that. I say, brothers, I don't believe we have any problems, but if it's anything out there, brothers, hey, the floor is open for you to speak and say so. But I, I, I always, uh, you know, always try to make sure we all good, man. And we're all on the same page because a brother might have a feeling about something. He might not say it. He might not speak on it, but nonetheless, you you can't be bottling that up, man. Just ready to blow up. Open rebuke is better than secret love, too, man. So, hey, let, let it out. Let it out, man, so we can squash that, all right? And keep it moving forward so we can abound in this loving so we can get close to our Lord. Because if we stop in love, you stop in the blessing. You know you want to hear the blessing, man. Okay? Let's see, uh... I think I got two more scriptures. This is first John. Oh, it's a lucky. This is first John uh three. Oh, maybe I should get four first. Let me see. Yeah, this is first John three. And uh, 11, it says, for this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. All right. So we knew that from the beginning to love one another, man. From the very beginning. That's how you also need to elect this from the beginning. It says, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. So that's just like Esau now. Like the, Esau has created this love that they have ide ideology of, of, of love. So not as Esau, not as Cain. We don't use that love because that love is poison. They use love as a cloak for wickedness in this place. They say, oh, uh, you know, pride. They call it pride. They call it love. Why are you stopping love, dude? You know, but that's the love of the world. So it says not as Cain. Cain had just Cain did the same thing. Just that's what Esau trying to do. Use that love propaganda, man. You know. It says, and slew his brother, and wherefore he slew them, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. That's just what they're trying to do now. So when we're out there prophesying the downfall of this place, they're getting mad at us because we're prophesying righteousness, and their works are evil. So they look at us like we're the wicked ones, but in actuality, we're telling the truth of the world. All right? We're being righteous through the eyes of Yahweh Bashem El Shah, and Lord willing, we continue to endure. It says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. 
<laughs> you see that? We pass from death unto life. They seek in death, man. They had chosen death rather than life. We pass from death unto life, man. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brethren abideth in death, man. All right. So if you if you uh if you don't love a brother, you abiding in death, man. And you're not you're not gonna pass on the life. You're not going to get that true life when Yahweh Shai returns. It says, whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of the Most High, because he had laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see that? We ought to lay down our life for the brethren, man. Call Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man, for even giving us that spirit to be willing to do that. Okay, so this is the last scripture, I believe, and then I'm going to wrap it up. This is First John 4 and 16. It says, and we have known. Uh, maybe, hold on, I'm going to start at 12. I started a little... I'm going to start at 10. It's so, so, this chapter is so good. I want to start at seven, so like you. It says, uh, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of the Most High, and everyone that loveth is born of the Most High and knoweth the Most High. All right? So when you love, you got to know the name of the Lord. His name, the Most High is not a, it's not his name. All right? His name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And you got to know that in order to say you, you got the love of the Most High. It said, he that loveth not, knoweth not Yahweh, for Yahweh is love. All right? So you people don't know love, and you don't know the Heavenly Father. So you don't know what true love is. It says, and, and that's how we're able to love our families more. That's how we're able to love our women, our women more. You know, women uh, fall for uh, Israelite men, elect Israelite men, Lord willing, and be like, I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? Them dudes don't do nothing that I believe in, but we love them anyway. It's because we know how to truly love through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shine through the commandments. All right. It says, uh, and this was manifested the love of the Most High towards us because that the Most High sent all his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. And, you know, actually, I got I put this video together in the first place because, um, you know, I was doing something with the brother the other night. And, you know, he looked me in my eyes and he was like, hey, yo, a habata, bro. And I know he meant it. <laughs> you know, he meant it, man. He was sincere. And, I, you know, I, I said a habata back to him, you know, and that 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 you you feel that, man. It's power in that because that's that's coming th from a possible man of the Lord, man, th from straight from the Heavenly Father, man. That's a download. All right. It says here in his love. Not that we love the Most High, but that he loved us. All right. John, was that 15 and 16 or 16 and 15? It says he had chosen us out of... Man, let me just get that real quick. I, know, I told you I might have been my last one. Y'all know how the spirit be. Work with me. <laughs> Y'all like scriptures anyway, right? It's all love. <laughs> this is John 15 and 16. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. All right. So the Lord says, we didn't choose him. He chose us, man. You know, so he's like, hey, I loved you. So I, I chose you to do this work. I chose you. I ordained you from the beginning, just like Jeremiah 1 and 5, to be a prophet to the nations and to love. All right. And to do my work, to be my, my elect. Okay. It says, um. Um, uh, this is first John 4 and 11. It says, Beloved, if the most high so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So, Yahweh and Yahweh Shah loved us. Yahweh loved us even when he turned his face on us, man. You know, but nonetheless, he said he was going to turn it back. That's true love, man. And he wasn't going to cast away his people. That's true love. Even though we messed up and we served out of God, he still loved us. Okay. It says, Beloved, uh, verse 12. No man hath seen the Most High at any time. If we love one another, the Most High dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. 
Hereby know that we that we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit. All right. That's how we know that the Heavenly Father is dealing with the apostles. That's how we know that the Heavenly Father is dealing with Great Millstone because he has given us of, of his spirit, man. That Rakako Dash, he's given us his spirit, man. It's a spiritual download of love and truth and prophecy. And these how we are, ought to know who where, where the truth is, man. Because this is where the spirit of Yahweh Shai is resting. It says, and if we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world, whosoever shall confess that Yahweh Shai is the Son of the Most High, the Most High dwelleth in him, and he in the Most High, he in Yahweh. And we have known and believed that the love that the Most High hath to us, Yahweh is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in Yahweh, and Yahweh in him. And uh, it says, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Hey, man, our love is made perfect. It says we have we gonna have boldness in the day of judgment, man. Because we go, Lord willing, we get through that Jacob's trouble. We get through all that, you know, and the Lord said, many shall know who are my chosen. We got boldness. We got, the scriptures talk about loving the appearing, appearing of the Most High, man. We're going to love his appearing, man. Okay? That's that's boldness in the day of his return. Where other people are going to faint. Other people are going to be utterly distraught. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out. Perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear hath torment. Ooh, that's beautiful. You know, 1 Timothy, what is that, 1 and 7? It says, He had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind. That's heavy, man. There, let me read that again. This is 1 John 4 and 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love, man. So that's why you, the only thing we're supposed to fear is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, man. We're not supposed to fear nothing in this world, nothing that happens to us in this world, because the Lord is going to protect it. And, and that fear brings torment, man. And you can't be perfected in love if you have fear, man. Okay. Mm, that's beautiful. It says we love him because he first loved us. You see that, man? He loved us, man. That's why we love you. Because he loved us first. If a man say, I love Yahweh and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he had not, who he had seen, how can he love God whom he had not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth the most high Yahweh love his brother also. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory and love. To Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the house of David the elect. Until next time, Ahabatham, 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 Anya Ahabatham, Yakal, 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 Shalom.